What's going on guys? It's your boy Ricky back with another video. Today I will be talking about the Defense Information School's basic still photography course. Now if you haven't seen my video production and documentation course, I'm going to put a card right here. Go back and watch that video. That's the first leg of the two courses that you will take as a 25 Victor Combat Documentation Status Production Specialist. Now basic still photography in my humble opinion is probably the harder course of the two. That course, when I went to AIT, it was around three months. From what I understand, they have cut down the uh, 25 Victor School because it used to be 26 weeks, but I don't believe it's 26 weeks anymore. I think it's like 16. Uh, it was little room for error. They graded really, really hard. When you're entering this basic still photography class, go in with an open mind. Don't go in thinking you're gonna be freaking Ansel Adams the first day you go in there. When you go in there, have your mind open to learn. It can be a difficult course if you're not paying attention to detail and you're not listening to your instructors. You are there to learn the basics of photography. Trust me, as time goes along, you will learn all the tricks of the trade. You will learn, you will be a great photographer as time go along. But entering that class, go in with an open mind knowing that you are there to learn the basics. Build a good foundation. It's just like a house. You don't want your house built on a shaky foundation. You wanna build a great foundation for your uh, photography career in the military and it starts with basic still photography. When I was there, again, like I said, it was very, it, it was, it could be a tough challenge and it was a tough challenge to me. I had did some things on the video side, but I had never did anything on the photography side. So going into that class, I just thought like I always thought it would be a piece of cake, but it, it, it's a lot to photography. And I know we live in a world where there's a lot of people who think they're photographers, who think they're pro photographers, but there's a lot of people out there that go to the PX and buy a Canon 6D or they go and buy a Canon T7i or whatever they have out now and they go out there and they think because they bought some fancy camera that they're now a photographer. But that can't be further from the truth. There's a lot of things that break down into photography that you must understand in order to get certain looks and certain shots. Everybody can look up every now and then in auto and get a decent looking photo in auto. But when you have your photo on auto, the computer, I mean, the, excuse me, the camera is making all the decisions for you based on the amount of light that you are in. So if you're out on a bright sunny day, it's gonna make the decisions based on all the light that it, that it reads. And a lot of times, more than not, it misreads light, therefore giving you a picture that's not properly exposed or, or just, just down right now, right? That when you go into basic still photography, everything's in manual. You know, if you want to tell a real photographer, give them a camera, put it on M, and tell them to go for it. If they cannot execute a good photo in manual mode, then chances are they're not who they say they are. So everything that you do in basic still photography is going to be in manual mode on your camera. I challenge you now, even if you're not in AIT or if you're headache there or uh, you want to be a photographer or whatever the case may be, start using your camera on the manual settings. And I'm talking about manual everything. I'm talking about manual shutter speed. I'm talking about manual f-stop. I'm talking about manual white balance. And I'm talking about manual focus. Try to use everything on manual so you can fully understand uh, what your camera can do. Because a lot of you guys that have cameras out there haven't really unlocked the full potential of your camera because you don't know how to use manual. You just throw it on automatic focus, automatic, everything, and you just let it make, make the decisions for you. But a lot of times, especially when you're looking at man, automatic focus, like now my camera's on automatic focus. We, I'm doing this vlog, but it's on manual focus just because I can't get to it like I want to, to fix it. Now, what I will say is once you know the rules, then you can break the rules. But when you don't know the rules at all, you don't need to be in automatic setting. And I'm gonna tell you a downside of having it on automatic, and I see it in a lot of vlogs here on YouTube, where you'll have somebody that'll be in an automatic setting, and they're uh, as far as uh, focus, and then something will come across the screen, and then you, the camera try to focus on him, and it's going in and out of focus. And to me, that messes up the pacing of vlogs when you're trying to look at a vlog, and then it's going in and out of focus. And I just can't, it, I can't really take it. It just kills me. There are some cameras that are better suited for that than others. Um, a lot of these cameras have face detection, where it puts a box on your face and it follows you around, but we're not talking about video here, we're talking about basic still photography. The first FA again is gonna be getting you to understand photography, understand the settings, understand what shutter speed is and what it does, understanding um, your aperture or f-stop and what it does, 
understanding what ISO is and what it does, understanding white balance and all these types of things. Before you get issued any camera gear, they're gonna really drive home the basics of what these things are. Just know going into it that you're gonna learn a lot on the, in that first FA about how the camera works and everything that it does. They're gonna also introduce different types of photos. They try to get you to understand different photos like you have uh, rule of thirds. The rule of thirds is basically if you ever looked on a camera there you could put a grid setting on your camera and it's like a tic-tac-toe grid. The, the most pleasing places is in the third so not directly in the middle but on the, in the third so in the sides of each of those grids will be the best spot um, for you to have your pictures in. Now there are times when dead center works but for the sake of basic still photography, they're gonna want you to shoot in the thirds. And these are terms, if you're watching this video, that you can actually look up and start to learn about it before you hit class. Some of you may already kind of know what some of these things are, some of you wouldn't. I didn't because I hadn't done any photography uh, going into my AIT. They're also gonna show you, like they got rule of thirds, they got um, leading lines, so basically a line leading to a subject. Um, they got balance and imbalance photos, and it's just, it's really basic to me, you know, for me, of course, but these things help you in the long run once you understand photography. For instance, the balance and imbalance. So basically, a balance is if you have two people in a photo and you have one in the foreground, one in the background, that's an imbalance photo. Um, you might have um, two people in the same plane, that's a balance photo, and that's very important in photography. When you're taking group shots, sometimes, if your people are not on the same plane and you're shooting, say you're in a bad lighting situation and you have to shoot on a lower F stop. Um, if your people are not on the same plane and you shoot on like, let's say F 2.8, you have to because of the lighting situation. If your people are not on the same plane, somebody's gonna be out of focus. So maybe the first couple people might be in focus and as you go down the line, they're gonna be out of focus. The way to maneuver that, if you're on that low F stop, is to make sure everybody's on the same plane and then you'll be able to achieve everybody in focus at that low f-stop but I, I i don't know that i didn't learn that and understand that until where i'm now in my career the, the importance of having people balanced because if you have to shoot in a situation like that because a lot of times when you're on 2.8 it's only going to focus on and it's going to throw other people out of focus if they're in balance one is slightly in front of another person then you're going to have uh somebody's going to be out of focus Okay, so I digress. Then you'll get issued your equipment. Um, they're gonna send you out on these uh, these photo assignments where you're gonna be doing rule of thirds and you're gonna be doing, oh my God, you're gonna be doing all kind of photos, panning. And I don't wanna get too far into it because you're gonna find out when you get in class, but you're gonna be doing all these assignments. They're gonna give you a work order, a paper, and they're gonna say, all right, you know, we need all these photos, blah, blah, blah. Come back at whatever time they tell you to come back. So you'll go out around post and you'll uh, achieve these shots. Uh, that they asked for on the thing. Then you'll come back to class, and once you get back to class, they'll put all the photos up on the screen, and they will critique you. And the critiques are sometimes, in most cases, very harsh, because they're trying to build you and to get you to think like a photographer. You might come back thinking you got a dope shot, and you take it back, and then they put it up on the screen, and they rip it to shreds. It, it, it's, it's not to be malicious at all, but it's to get you to think like a photographer, and it's to get you to the level that you need to be so when you're out of AIT and you arrive at somebody's unit, your skill set is good enough to achieve a mission. In a lot of cases, those cat, cats aren't ready. I'm just going to be honest. Cats aren't ready to do what they need to do when they get to a unit. They're just, they're eight to freak up. Now, I will say this. Your education doesn't stop at Denfos, and I see that a lot with 25 Victor. They graduate the Denfos course, and they think that's all they need to know, and then they spend the rest of their career shooting on a Denfos level, and that's, that's, that's a no-go. Um, you should always continue your education. Most of these units now have lynda.com where they give you free accounts. You got YouTube. I learned a lot on YouTube about different lighting techniques and uh, just different things. YouTube helps a lot. So seek out your own education. There's also going to be a unit on studio photography. Now, I don't think they spend enough time on it, um, but there's going to be a unit where you go in and you're going to take these personality type portraits and things of that nature in the studio use the studio lighting and they're going to show you all that stuff um, that's towards the end um, they also have another unit that's is going to be like crime scene photography and there is where they teach you flash now that's another unit i believe they need to spend more time on because a lot of 25 victors coming out of the schoolhouse do not know how to use flash i see so many young victors out there with no flash 
in auditoriums, at promotion ceremonies, or at award ceremonies, in buildings that, that are poorly lit with no flash. That's just a no-go. You're not gonna get good photos by doing that. So flash photography, I would say you might have to seek out a little bit of your own education because they don't give you enough, in my opinion, um, of what they need to give you as far as flash goes. And they're gonna teach you also a little bit about, um, they're gonna use the, uh, macro photography, like using macro lenses, where you can get really, really close to something like a penny or a coin or something and really get the details of that. Um, they're gonna show you that. And that's gonna be a little brief thing that you're gonna learn as well. But overall, you're gonna learn you're going to be able to learn a lot and the, the, the basis that you need to come out of there and be a great photographer. Um, I'm grateful for Denfos. Um, I went on to uh, go to my first unit and win a Photographer of the Year award. Um, and it's not a full credit to Denfos, but it's uh, some of it's to me self-educating and always shooting. Um, at my first unit, I seek opportunities to get better. Um, I was shooting at the uh, North Carolina State University football games. You know, I was anything I could shoot, anything I could get in to shoot, I was shooting. I shot every major college, uh, a couple high schools in the area, every, every major college in North Carolina. I shot Duke, North Carolina, um, North Carolina State, um, Fayetteville State. Um, I shot, uh, even they had like an indoor football team, the Fayetteville, what's their name? Uh, I forgot what the name is, but they got a little football, indoor football, semi-pro. I went even, I even shot that. So seek opportunities to go out and shoot. Um, go out, um, buy yourself a light kit. If you're a photographer and you don't have a camera, um, you need to be. Like if you're gonna be a photographer, you need to have your own tools and don't always depend on what they issue because sometimes you're not able to get that. Always have your own tools. Um, buy a light kit, experiment with it and learn how to use it. And a lot of people complain in the military about not having enough money. And I know people who go out and work second jobs at Best Buy and freaking all these places to get extra money. But as a 25 victor, you have a skill set that you can go out and make a, a, a extra income. You portraits, uh, photography, you uh, even video. There's things you can do with your skill set. Just the skill set you learn at Denfos, where you can go out and make yourself some extra cash. So just just be cognizant of that and. Um, it's a good course. As you can see, all the lights are turning out on me, so I guess that means it's time for me to end this video. Again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.